suppose you are standing in an open field now if you look up what will you see you will see the vast blue sky this sky encircles or surrounds our planet earth and it's known as atmosphere now if you look at the atmosphere from space it will appear like magical whips and like other magical and miraculous things the atmosphere is invisible to us and it can only be felt in this lesson we shall discuss about this layer of earth that is atmosphere in details imagine yourself in a warm cozy blanket during a cold winter night similarly the atmosphere is just like that blanket protecting our earth now imagine that there is no atmosphere it means that there is no air so we will not be able to hear anything similarly we will not be able to breathe because there is no oxygen or air now we also know that the fishes breathe in the dissolved oxygen present in water now in absence of air the fishes will not be able to survive similarly if there is no air or atmosphere then our sky will look as black as outer space and the birds will not be able to fly thus atmosphere is an important component of earth and it helps in sustenance of life on earth now let us know what does atmosphere mean well atmosphere is an invisible blanket of air surrounding the earth now the word atmosphere comes from two words atmos and sphere where atmos means vapor and sphere means ball so atmosphere is an invisible blanket or a sphere that is composed of vapor or air and this invisible blanket as we can see here surrounds our earth now this layer extends for several thousand kilometers above the earth's surface however this layer is not uniform throughout this means that as we go higher and higher the air becomes thinner and thinner and it gradually fades away or blends with space and we actually do not know where the atmosphere ends now this layer is composed of several gases let's know about them so as mentioned just now the atmosphere is composed of several gases this pie chart shows the composition of atmosphere and here we can see that nitrogen is the most abundant gas present in atmosphere and its amount is 78 percent nitrogen is followed by oxygen the amount of oxygen present in air is 21% and the remaining 1% is composed of several gases in small percentage for instance carbon dioxide is present in 0.9 percentage 0.03 percentage of air is composed of argon and the remaining 0.07% is composed of several gases like water vapor hydrogen helium and other gases now apart from these gases dust particles and pollen grains are also present in air now these gases have several utilities which makes atmosphere an important component of the earth we shall now discuss about the uses of each of these gases well we know that nitrogen is the most abundant gas in atmosphere and this gas helps to maintain soil fertility and in growth of plants now imagine a chocolate lover is given a cocoa plant instead of chocolates will he relish the plant just like chocolates of course not similarly the plants also cannot absorb nitrogen directly from air as a result nitrogen fixing bacteria is present at the root nodules of the plants which convert the nitrogen into usable form and thus helps the root to absorb nitrogen this is how nitrogen enters the food chain and all living beings can utilize this vital gas we know 21 percentage of atmosphere is composed of 
oxygen this oxygen is given by plants which we breathe in and we breathe out carbon dioxide which is eventually utilized by plants thus atmosphere as we can see here helps in exchange of these vital gases now the oxygen that we inhale is an important gas it helps us to perform metabolic activities of our body and also helps in our survival i just mentioned that Carbon dioxide that we breathe out is eventually utilized by plants in the process of making food with the help of sunlight and water. Now this process in which the plants make food is known as photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide which is exhaled by us is eventually utilized by plants in the process of photosynthesis. Now an important byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. This means that this vital gas is exhaled by plants and is released into the air. This gas is then eventually consumed by us. Thus, a natural balance between gases is maintained in nature. Well, apart from assisting plants in making food, carbon dioxide also helps to keep the earth warm. Well, carbon dioxide is an important greenhouse gas. This means that carbon dioxide absorbs sun's heat during daytime and does not allow this heat to escape at night so carbon dioxide traps the sun's heat during night and this helps the earth to remain warm even at night so you realize how important carbon dioxide gas is and in its absence the entire earth would have freeze at night now before we proceed with our lesson let us see if we can answer this which of these gases help to keep the earth warm is it oxygen argon nitrogen or carbon dioxide what do you think well the correct answer is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide traps the sun's heat and helps to keep the earth warm even at night so the correct answer is carbon dioxide now here we have some pictures of mount everest we can see that this place is extremely cold and the peaks are covered with snow and ice now have you ever wondered why higher mountain peaks are usually very cold well higher altitudes have low temperature because temperature decreases with increase in height this means that as we go higher temperature drops in fact temperature drops at the rate of 1 degree celsius for every 165 meter of ascent or 6.5 degree celsius for every 1000 meter of ascent and this rate of decrease in temperature with increase in altitude is known as normal lapse rate So due to normal lapse rate we find that temperature decreases with increase in altitude and therefore higher altitudes usually have lower temperatures Now you must have observed that mountaineers usually carry oxygen cylinders while traveling to high peak mountains but have you ever wondered why do they carry oxygen cylinders when oxygen is present in substantial amount that is about 21% in air well the reason is that air becomes thinner as we go up or as we go higher look at this vertical section of air column here we find that air molecules are more at lower levels while air molecules are less at higher levels from this we can infer that density decreases with increase in altitude that is as we go higher density drops and therefore the air becomes thinner as we go higher 
Now, since the density of air decreases, therefore, the oxygen content of air also decreases. And this is the reason why mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders along with them while traveling to high peak mountains. So, as mentioned just now, the density of air decreases with increase in altitude. This means that air molecules are more at lower levels and since air molecules are more at lower levels, therefore, this increased number of air molecules exerts higher air pressure while the air molecules as we know are less at higher levels. So, this less number of air molecules exerts low air pressure. So, high air pressure prevails at lower altitudes while low air pressure prevails at higher altitudes. So, from this we infer that not only temperature and density but also air pressure decreases with increase in altitude. So, due to this fact the air pressure varies across several places on the earth's surface. This is to say that there are some regions where high air pressure prevails while there are some other regions where lower air pressure prevails and due to this differences in air pressure wind is developed and wind always blows from high air pressure region to low air pressure region. Now, let us understand the meaning of wind. Well, moving air is called wind. Now, wind can be of any velocity. It can be as pleasant as breeze in which the trees and flowers bloom. Well, it can also be as violent as thunderstorms which may uproot trees. So, we learned that atmosphere is an invisible blanket of air that surrounds the earth. And this atmosphere extends for several thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface. However, this layer is not uniform throughout. This is to say that as we move higher, the density of air decreases. So, density decreases with increase in altitude. Similarly, temperature and atmospheric pressure also decreases with increase in altitude. So, based on these characteristics that is density, temperature and atmospheric pressure, the scientists have differentiated the atmosphere into several layers, particularly into five distinct layers that is one, two, three, 4, 5. They have differentiated the atmosphere into 5 distinct layers. So, as mentioned just now, based on several characteristics, the scientists have differentiated the atmosphere into 5 distinct layers and these layers are namely troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. So, troposphere is the lowest layer of atmosphere and exosphere is the outermost layer of atmosphere. And in between these layers, we have stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere. So, these are the five important layers of atmosphere. So, in today's lesson, we discussed about an important layer of the earth that is atmosphere. We understood that atmosphere is an invisible blanket of air that surrounds our planet earth and it is composed of several vital gases like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor etc. Then we also discussed about the utilities of each of these gases. Then we also understood that this layer is not uniform throughout that is density, temperature and air pressure decreases in atmosphere with increase in altitude and therefore based on these characteristics the atmosphere has been distinguished or differentiated into five important layers namely troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on atmosphere. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per 
your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now